wig? Did you just say wig? Wig, okay. We like asking questions and right, and, and apparently a conversation. When I move, I'm like this, <laughs> which is bad. And we're recording. Are we really yes. <laughs> officially this time? Yes. Great. Um, I'm Mart here. I'm C Tapper. And this is <laughs> we get out. out. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, she's already sick. Already. Yay, but we're gonna die. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> By the time this episode comes out, watch like the coronavirus be over and like it probably will be, and no one will get this. This will reference. just be a snapshot of history, <laughs> where everyone was afraid of pa- uh, pandemics of Pandora uh, box. <laughs> yes, of Pandora box. Um, <laughs> but what are we doing today besides Who fearing for doing? our lives? Who are we doing today? Okay, this is someone I've wanted on the podcast for a long time. Woo, we finally got her here. It's Gina Tonic. Hi. <laughs> ba, 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 ba. Welcome. Ba, ba, ba. Welcome to the foreign land of Brooklyn. Oh my God, so foreign. Yeah. I know. Caitlin was like, uh, beware, Martina lives really far away, like deep in Brooklyn. I really and I was don't. like, <laughs> yes, I thought do. it'd be like, like Ridgewood or something. And then it's like, Beautiful Prospect Park. Like, it's so fun. Literally across the street from the park. And Caitlin's like, I don't know where you are. <laughs> <laughs> I can never find this place. What a mess. What a you mess. live in the park. You're like the bird lady in um, Home Alone 2. That'd be fierce. I, that's the only one Someone that I Someone should do that as a number. They have. They, I know. Pixie they have. does it, I think. Does she? I feel like yeah. someone has. It's cool. Does she do Feed the Birds to it? I think <gasps> she does. Beautiful. That's so genius. Yeah, I think she does. That's why Pixie's one of my faves. She's cool. I love her. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, no, just kidding. Okay. So, Gina, where are you from originally? So, I am from a small town on the West Coast called Los Angeles, California. So tiny. Never so heard of it. So tiny. Her. I know. Never heard of it. <laughs> never heard of it. What, it's like 10 people there? It's like 10 times like maybe a couple thousand. I actually don't know how many people live there. Oh, uh, it's more than New York. It's like, 13, it more? It's like 13 million. Because LA is so it's, big. Right. That makes sense. LA is like... They even include like Orange County in LA. Which oh, really? Is, like, yeah, which is like not LA yeah, at, that's all, not but at all. But it's like 13 million. I've been people. to the West Coast twice, so I'm like, uh-huh. <laughs> right. Yeah, and I just talk about the six months I live in LA all the time. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah. Wah, wah. But you were from, do you want to talk about what part of LA? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm from uh, Santa Monica. Uh, one of uh, my faves. I know. So, and people always like ask me like why I left because like, well, the the rent there is so crazy expensive. It can it can be. It's like here where I feel like, depending on where in LA you go, you can find you can find good deals. It's just like New York. If you know people. Yeah, if you know people. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta know the people. You and gotta know the people. Um, but I I ended up leaving. I mean, I, it's like beautiful and sunny and gorgeous and nice. It's but so nice. I know, but um, I guess I kind of figured like. People who live in the Midwest, they either move to like LA or New York if yeah. they have aspirations for big city life. Mm-hmm. And I figured, well, I already did the whole LA thing for, at that point, it was like 23, 24 years yeah. of my life. So I was like, well, I might as well move to New York. And here we are. Yeah, you did the opposite of what I tried to do. Oh, really? Yeah. Are you from here? Yeah, I'm from here. And then I was like, well, I wanted to make it in Hollywood. So then I moved oh. to LA, obviously. But you came here for a reason. A lot of people want to come here, but slightly different reason than what a lot of drag queens come here for what was that <laughs> directing yeah oh my god yeah so i um i majored in directing in well I actually went to school for originally musical theater um and then what's sort of funny is that's kind of how i got into drag in the first place um and then ended up majoring in yeah directing and then came here because i wanted to start a theater company and now like a I like to say I'm like a one-woman theater company. You kind of so, are. Yeah. I oh, mean, yeah. I saw mm-hmm. you say that. My Absolutely. apartment is like full of costumes and props and <laughs> I make I, my own material and, you know, it's... I love a drag queen's apartment because it's just like half your life is like on center stage and then your boy clothes are like in the closet. <laughs> Literally. Well, and we, have, we have two drag queens because I, I live with Vivica Galactica. Oh, cute. So there's oh, the two of us and so she, and she makes oh, jewelry. Oh. So like, there's like, and she'll like sit on, she's like going to hate me for like airing this out in public. <laughs> she like sits at our coffee table in the living room and like does a lot of her working. Like she'll be like, you know, watching TV yeah. and like, Making stuff. Uh, so, like, if you're like in our living room, there's just like, and like I like sew a bunch. So, like, okay, at any given do. moment, our living room has like, you know, our couch, our coffee table, our TV, and then like a ton of rhinestones, like 
fabric, sewing machine, thread everywhere, the little uh, flathead needles everywhere. Oh like, my God. How do you pins. not like hurt yourself? Um, my roommate will like, our, so we have like one roommate who does new drag and he'll like <laughs> passive aggressively be like, I found this pin on the ground and I'm like, I'm sorry, <laughs> but like, we're just trying to like get famous and You're, be beautiful. You could like start so. your own, you have like a literal drag house going on. We do. On. I <laughs> wish, I wish we had like, I wish we could teach our other roommate how to style wigs. Oh. If she can make jewelry and I can make dresses and he can style wigs, we would be so oh self-sufficient. Oh my God. We'd be like a full on sweatshop. You could make so much money. I know, I know, oh, I know, dreams, <laughs> dreams. So going back to your roots, I know you got into drag kind of unexpectedly. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, okay, so I guess the full story is, so I went to school for musical theater, um, and my first year uh, didn't get cast in basically anything, because I was like... And what school were you at? I went to UC Irvine. Okay. Um, and, you know, being like sort of like a flamboyantly gay student, like, it was weird because like, I have like these like, you know, leading man good looks and like a deep baritone voice, which works for like leading man roles. But then like I have like a quirky kind of like funny white personality. So like I get called back for like both like the leading man and then like the supporting character. And I was like, well, you're too cute to be the supporting character, but like you're too quirky to be the leading character. So like my first year, I like didn't get cast in anything. They were like struggling with like where to put me in the department because like setting musical theater is all about like pigeonholing you into a type absolutely because they can sell the type after you yep. graduate mm -hmm. so uh didn't get cast in anything the first year and then my second year we did this really obscure musical from the 30s called the three penny opera so obscure i mean uh, most people like <laughs> haven't heard of it unless you're like a big music theater person yeah if you're musical theater like right i feel like a lot of like productions put that on though because it's like copyright free. I'm pretty sure. So, oh right, yeah. right. We put it on at Hunter College. I had to oh help with God. the set for that. I did not participate. Oh, just our, the set. Our just set the set for it was crazy. It was like three stories and like everything was like Ooh. iron and steel. It was really cool. Mm. Um, but what? And I got when I auditioned for it, I got called back for the female ensemble. Ooh. And my boy name is like a gender neutral name. So like I went to the stage manager office and I was like, I think there was a mistake. I think they think I'm a girl, but I'm actually like should probably be called back for the male ensemble. And then they were like, oh no, they're like, we actually want uh, one guy to like do the female ensemble part in drag. Mm -hmm. um, I know, and I was like, oh, that's cool. And I think that was like, right around when like Drag Race was like, sort of like had just started. Like they maybe put out like one or two seasons. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was like, that's cool. And then of course I was the only guy called back for the female ensemble. <laughs> so obviously I got the part. Uh, it was like literal destiny. It truly was. <laughs> and I like went to the costume shop and borrowed a pair of heels and like would prance around the campus, like, you know, get used to walking in heels. Yeah. And ended up basically stealing the show. And yes. then the director of that show was the head of the directing program. Mm -hmm. So he, and I would like explain to him all of my like woes. And he convinced me to take his class. And then the next semester, I switched majors to directing and then graduated with the directing degree basically yeah and then moved back to la uh tried to get and when i tried to like get acting work all the roles i got were drag parts literally oh my God. so like purposely um, like were you purposely like auditioning for that or no well no but it was like uh the first one i had gotten because someone was like oh we heard you've done drag uh, before gotcha, can gotcha. you audition for this part and i was like mm -hmm. sure why not and then i did that one and that one led to another one and then like and then with those theater companies i would perform under my given name mm -hmm. in drag i didn't have a drag name yet yeah yeah um, we just perform for like fundraisers and stuff yeah. and i didn't really delve too much into the la scene at that point I wish I had. What scene? Uh, <laughs> whoa, Shade. <laughs> Ellie has an awesome... I, I've heard it's very much expanded since I've left. For sure. When I was living there, when it was... There? Um, I was there like 2017. Oh. Yeah. When I mean, there, they had a drag scene back it, then, They too. had a scene, but it was not very... It was not very united. Oh. I will say that. Okay. Besides, word. like, yeah, the yeah. Dragula-type girls, because they were already okay. around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think LA is hard, because, like, in New York... You can hop in a cab and like do a gig in Brooklyn. You can do a gig in the Bronx. You can do you know gigs all over the place. But LA, it is a little more segregated because like you know the WeHo girls kind of all book each other, and then there's like the East Side girls, and yep. there isn't really a lot of drag on the West Side. I wish there was. If I ever moved back, I think that would be like my. my I don't thing think there's. Would be I mean, and there's like maybe happen. one or two like gay right. clubs to begin I with over there. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. on the West Side for sure. Yeah, yeah, on yeah. the West Weho Side. Is, I well, think WeHo is amazing. It's the thing is, there's so much, because um, all the Drag Race girls moved to LA. Right. So they're the ones obviously getting all the bookings because right. they're the names and they're going to work to yeah, just be true. there. Yeah, that's true. But then it's cool mm -hmm. because then like your local Drag Race fame party is hosted by like Trixie and Willem and yeah. oh, it's really cool. Oh, I cool. remember. Yeah. yeah. I saw Alaska and Trixie all the time. Like, right. And Katya, everybody because they're all there. So I feel like it kind of hinders like the local scene. 
Besides the Dragula girls, because like when I was there, the Boulay brothers still had their weekly um, drag show. Right. So like downtown drag was still like accessible. Which is funny because downtown drag is a fully new thing. Like downtown being a mini neighborhood is like within the last five years. Yeah, year. but it was great. It was like much more united. But I feel like the rest of LA is just like drag race girls. It's hard. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. I don't blame anybody. <laughs> I think I literally know nothing about. <laughs> I know so we should take you. Yeah, we should Still take trip. it. But I like my favorite thing to do is just go to Mickey's and that's all drag race girls. Yeah, so Mickey's is fine. I don't know. I've seen those videos quite a lot. So. Yeah, no, that that Mickey's like the number one what's drag other, spot in the country. What's the other bar that's filmed? A lot. WeHo? Uh, it's called the Abbey WeHo. Is it oh, like yeah. just like... Uh, what's the best way to The describe? Abbey. It's got to be the Abbey. Kind of looks like, I mean, I'm assuming, but... The Abbey's one with the brick. It's like very... Lots of bricks. It looks like, kind of like a church a little bit, I guess. Well, they're next to the cathedral, which is right. like a church, quote unquote. Oh, okay. right. But the Abbey is like the big... That's where all the celebs go to... It's like next to all the Vanderpump stuff. Honestly, though, stuff. the club in LA I love the most. So they have a Flaming Saddles in LA. Oh, yeah. But the, so the one here is like a tiny dive bar. Yeah. In LA, it's like a full-on club. There's two stories. There's a huge stage, and the stage mm-hmm. has like seats around it, and like there's this big staircase that the queens like enter and exit from when they perform. It's re- it's my I favorite place Flaming to do shows when I go there. It's amazing. Well, they've kind of done more drag there now. I yeah. feel like before it was oh, just yeah. like go. The, also, the big thing with LA though is that there's so much go go boys. Like that's ha- what they use for entertainment to bring people in and like get people to spend money. That it kind of hinders like any Fun sort of fact, drag. Basically, mm-hmm. every city I've been to is like that except for really. Yeah, go go boys are huge. I was just in Providence, and like uh, the night there is because it's mostly dancing. Yeah, I was on a Saturday night, so like typically I would say like. 80% of the night is, like, just really hot go-go boys coming out and, mm-hmm. like, grinding on the stage. And, like, just, right. <laughs> honestly, the go-go boys do more costume changes than the drag queens do. That's so funny. Like, literally. Because they'll be up there just, like, you know, like, and the, some of them had, like, reveals. and Like, it was crazy. That's crazy. And, like, when I was in Denver, I feel like go-go boys, or go-go, and, like, a lot of places, too, now because of, like, inclusion and, you know, having yeah, everyone yeah. have something for everyone. Uh, a lot of these bars now will have like go go boys and go go girls. Yeah, and just it's really fierce. L A too, they do that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's New York. I think you used to do that in drag because like uh, truly uh, a little bit taken a little over. Like, yeah, well, truly. I feel like there's so many drag queens and they know they can get the queens to get people to buy right. drinks. So that's like the whole point that's of any true. of this is to get that's people to buy drinks. And all the go go so. boys are drag queens now. Oh my, absolutely! Like literally, everybody, literally, is a everyone's drag a freaking drag queen. Everybody. I saw the inheritance last weekend and like. It's a super, I don't know if you guys know, it's like a super gay play. I've seen it's it, playing yeah. like the New Angels America. But no. the, I didn't realize the whole cast is straight. And Wait, I guess what? The whole cast is literally Shut the, the fuck entire up. cast. I know. They're really Wait, what show is this? It's called The Inheritance. Oh, The Inheritance. Um, no, I've heard of it. It's about yeah. how like the AIDS epidemic okay. like washed out an entire generation mm-hmm. of gay men and how that's kind of affected us today. Um, the entire cast is straight. But seriously, I think it's because all the gay actors are drag queens now and they don't have anyone to cast. I'm like... <laughs> Appalled. Wow. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Well, we you saw it, right? Yeah, I saw yeah. both parts. Wow. We, we were convinced they were like having, would have like orgies backstage. Like, that's a gorgeous cat. They're all yeah. beautiful men. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure they can find literally all straight. <laughs> Well, I, I feel like that's also just like theater bias in general. Because yeah, they always for sure. want straight actors. They take our parts. Yeah, exactly. They were for all everything. flaming, though. Everyone was flaming. <laughs> I know. I guess they were good they actors. They probably all had really good gay friends who they yeah, like, used honestly. as their inspiration. Honestly. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. So, heading back, how did you get your drag name? Um, that's a really good question. I low key, honestly, forgot. Um, <laughs> but it was never. So, okay, when I lived in LA. I actually had a pipe dream of like being a drag queen, ah. and I was gonna call myself because Art Papa just come out. Okay. Um, so I was gonna call myself Venus Deville, which is funny because now there's Vicky, and we would have been like drag oh, sisters. No, no, there's Vicky Deville and Venus Envy, I know, and they're I both a they're like, big my, A-fab, they're like two queens. of my favorite perform like, drag performers in the entire <laughs> world. I obsess. With, they're like, I always joke out all my favorite drag queens are all like female A-fab. drag queens. Yeah. Like, I, and like. They inspire me so much. Anyways. That would have been um, weird. I know. Um, and <laughs> I got to tell Vicky that. Uh, I think I've told her before. <laughs> That's so funny. And then when I moved here and like started doing drag here, well, uh, before I even started doing drag, um, my drink of choice at the time was gin and tonic. Obviously. Has and, it changed? Um, it, it, it fluctuates. <laughs> I drink a lot. So like I get bored of the same thing. And I also uh, have, well, <laughs> I have slight acid reflux. Uh, and same. tonic is very acidic. Yeah. And 
Uh, I hope no one's listening to this. A lot of the gay bars in the city use like that really cheap, oh, absolutely. gross, nasty tonic. Absolutely. So we'll only get gin and tonic to like a fancy bar that has like fancy tonic from a bottle. Absolutely. Um, no, you have to. <laughs> otherwise, I'll do like ginger ale or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I was just like drinking in a bar one night and I was like, if I ever did drag, I would call myself gin and tonic. Um, which is funny because I didn't even think about it at the time. But then once I started actually using the name and I was like ex- explaining it to people and then uh, my ex was like, oh, and like your mom, uh, because my mom's name is Gina. And I didn't even think about that at the time. (laughs) So, and, but of course, like what I do as a performer is in some ways an homage to her because Mm -hmm. she wanted to be a performer and she, Uh, before she had kids mm -hmm. and then she had kids and that stopped. Well, that's very similar to my story. Yeah. Yeah. My mom was an actress and then she had me and then she kind of like gave it that up. (laughs) Right. It's the very like LA, New York story. Yeah. It is a very, yeah. It's like happening to so many of my friends currently as well. Mm -hmm. So. I, I, you know, kids just take over your life. They do. That's why you don't want kids. Same. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's two kids. <laughs> so did you realize that Gina Tonic was going to be a very common drag name? So I really <laughs> didn't. And the thing was, I didn't even start drag with the intention of like doing drag. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like being a regular like gig yeah, performer. It, it never, because I, I was fully intended on like, doing theater jobs and mm-hmm. like starting a theater company and, you know, being, a, doing that whole thing. Uh, so like, cause I know a lot of people are like, Oh, you know, when you come up with a drag name, you should Google it, which I guess you should. Um, I think nowadays. Yeah. But here's the <laughs> other thing too. And listen, I, there's, there's a genotonic in Canada. I know. Isn't uh, there another genotonic in New York? There's a genotonic in Brooklyn Jenna. who I met recently and she's fabulous. She's I saw one spelled G E E N A tonic. G like Gina Davis. No, Gina Tonic. That's no, I just like, saw a poster. Like yeah, 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 like Martyr gets G- it. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. Um, <laughs> but the thing is, I honestly wonder had I Googled Gina Tonic back then, if many other drag queens would have come up. Because now when you Google Gina Tonic, you see me. Are you number um, one? I, Are course. you the number one? I'm That's pretty amazing. sure I am. I love that. Good um, for you. Yeah, girl, That's where you belong. Uh, my mom, who is my also my inspiration, also my biggest fan, she's also my webmaster, and she tricked out my website with some good SEO. So, Ooh. Know. wow, mom, <laughs> she went from like being a performer to like freaking like I know she, internet takeover. Salute to mom. Mm-hmm. Salute to mom. Yeah. We stand moms. <laughs> See, I'm always in favor of choosing the dumbest name possible, so that <laughs> you're only going to be the only one. That's smart. That was yeah. smart for you. There's no other, there's no other martyr because no one's dumb enough to do. Well, it. I always think one person like one name names are kind of hard as like a drag performer because yeah. like how do you yeah. kind of market yourself? Yeah, like how do you market? And I love her to death. Like lemon. No, yeah, like, lemon or blue or like there's a million oh, yeah, queens named after colors. Yeah, right. Like how magenta. do you magenta? Like there's but she does magenta with a J is like her like eponym 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 whatever that word is. Hominem? <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, Hominem? You just <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> At least you're pretty. But I feel like... <laughs> <laughs> read number one. <laughs> but I'm always just like, how do you like market yourself? Unless like, all I mean, a lot of queens, like their goal is not to like... Yeah. You know. Uh-huh. Though a lot of people put like queen in their name. Right. You know what I mean? Like untitled queen. Ding. <laughs> we had to have to mention. Um, but then they, then they get that. Then you, like, three months later, there's a Facebook status. My last name isn't Queen. And it's like, we Oh, get my it. God, I know. <laughs> we I remember it. that with Aja. Right. When Aja, because Aja's, um, your, girl, her at handle was Aja Queen. And she's like, right, I my that. last name's not Queen. Right. And I'm like, but it's your handle. It, like, right. it was, like, also, I don't know. But like, I think sometimes, like, these venues, and they book these performers, and they don't know better, and they just see the handle. Oh, shit. And they're like, oh, You're it's right. Aja Queen. And they'll put, like, Aja Queen on, like, yeah. the poster. Yeah. I mean, it's just a weird situation to be in. But if that's your name, that's your name. Yeah. You, oh, my favorite, my favorite drag name is Pickle. She's I, an yeah. LA queen. Pickle's She's actually awesome. really funny. But, like, I just love that name. It's funny. <laughs> it's a good Does name. she get in a Pickle? I don't know. <laughs> Those other girls, they love to get in little pickles all uh, the time. A lot of pickles. <laughs> Lots, a lot of Lots little of pickles. pickles. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> Where is this going? <laughs> all right, last. Last question mm-hmm. for this little segment. Okay. So you said Charles Bush is an influence on you. Yeah. How, like, how did you discover Charles Bush? How has 
they influence you. He yeah. goes by he because right. he doesn't, consi- more of a he doesn't consi- consider himself a drag queen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I first read Psycho Beach Party, mm-hmm. which is one of his... Pl- so I guess for those who don't yeah, know... Yeah, we should explain know, who we Charles should explain Bush, Bush is. is. Yeah. But Charles Bush is a playwright and performer. And as far as I know, back in like the 80s when he yeah. first started writing... Mm-hmm. Uh, it was that sort of thing where there weren't parts for him, mm-hmm. so he created them for himself. So he started writing plays, and they were these kind of sort of weird, wacky, like underground yeah. plays. And yep. then you know how it is in New York, and they do well and they sell out. And then the straight white men go, "Oh, here, take our money, and 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 we'll sell this." Like, yeah. and so he's he's actually had quite a lot of like international acclaim. I think he is. Uh, I know he had that play, The Tale of the Artist Wife. Mm-hmm. Which was very decorated. It may have even won a Pulitzer Prize. I, I know it won the Tony for sure. I don't think it won a Pulitzer because um, I had to do a lot of research on Charles right. for my book. But okay. I don't think he won a Pulitzer. But I know he's like won like like a Tony, like a Lifetime he's Achievement had a lot of commercial award. success. Yeah, he's like very very well known. And his right. his plays like just would sell out for like oh my God. years and years and like right. just be huge. If I could go back hits. in time, I would love to go back in time and see like one of those original. Me too. So like, badly. hundred percent. The lesbians of Sodom uh-huh. or whatever. One I want to see favorites. that so bad. Uh, but he, Charles Bush is still around. Charles, Charles no, Bush is still. He has a still... play running off Broadway. I haven't seen it yet because I've been busy. We um, should go together. Yeah, we should. I've seen, I've seen one Charles Bush play. Okay. Right. He was like a nun. It was fabulous. Uh-huh. He does a lot of references to like um, Old classic movies. Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, which is why I love him so much. Yeah. Which is, I think, part of why I like his work so much. Mm-hmm. And he's done film as well. He's had a few of his um, scripts turned, turned into, into movies. Films. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I discovered him in college, uh, honestly, looking for like monologue and scene material. Ah. And, and people would always, you know, because I was like the gay actor in the department, uh, I would get you know, referred to, like, lots of, like, Charles Bush and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so I read one of his plays. This is before I even did drag um, and loved it. And now that I do drag, would love to, like, have one of his shows put up starring me. (gasps) Um, I will help with that. I've been (laughs) been trying to do that. There was... um, I was actually fully going to do Psycho Beach Party a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. And then a certain person that I was working with... uh, so it said that there was a Fire Island production happening and I shouldn't oh. do it. But like Fire Island and Manhattan are like, might as well be other countries. Yeah, point, like right? honestly, I feel like nothing they do correlate to each other no. besides right. the performers who go to And then that board. production mm-hmm. didn't even end up happening. So I should have uh, done it that year anyways. You should have done it anyway. I know. Yeah. Maybe this summer we'll do it. I'll help. You've heard it first. Exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually have to do it. God damn it. Uh, well, we're, we have it. I'll hold you filmed. to it. Yeah. No, I want to. I'm, I'm gonna I want to bring Charles Bush back. So we got to make this happen. I'm going to put a fake date in our description. Be like, Love. Oh my God. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Debut. Genotonics production of the like people who own the rights are like, uh, so we heard that you're putting on our play. Yeah. Like, where's our royalty? Have you paid us <laughs> Um, uh, on that note, <laughs> I think we should take a little break. Okay. Okay. We'll Great. be right back, kids. <gasps> Boy. Bye. Wig. Okay. I know. Wig. I feel that already. Wig. Okay. Wig. Did you just say wig? Wig. Okay. I am ready for my wig. Are we recording? We are now. I knew it. <laughs> I beat you. I figured it out. <laughs> Did you now? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Does Martin make like a recording face when it's actually recording? No, he like <laughs> we'll just be in the middle of a conversation and he just clicks start. Right. And then I'm like, oh. it's more natural because I get some more organic. Cue. It's some more yeah. ag- organic. You don't have to do the awkward like we're starting, or, which I guess we did anyways. But. Uh, that's okay. I don't care. like look at this organic conversation that just. This came is out. clearly yeah. a very organic. It's very actually meta. bit. We're reading off a script right now. Oh my god! <laughs> Could you imagine? A very drag race of us. <laughs> it's gonna be like poorly written. You know what? My yeah, poorly written. But my favorite is when they do the podcast section with um Rue and Michelle, yeah. and I'm like they have the guests. I'm sorry. <laughs> but like those podcast episodes, quote unquote, never come out. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I think they did for one season. Did they really? But like none of the other ones. Yeah, they never were. Those they're podcast not real. interviews are like an hour long in well, real life on the podcast, but in the show, they're like t- t- five minutes. It's all fake. I it's think just they did it for All Stars 2. I think that was like the first one and they actually recorded it. But then oh, like, did they really? And then for the other ones, they, yeah, they don't use it. You know why? It's because Rue records the podcast out of drag. And no, I not want to sit there for three yeah, hours and talk to three queens. No. Lordy. I want to need in full ass drag on a on a soundstage. Is anyone like shocked that Rue's now showing her legs? Because that means she has to wear that outfit the entire. Oh, that's time. true. She's recording. That's true. Out tea. Yeah. Fuck. 
Good for her. She has I, great legs. Um, low key, miss. I'm gonna miss um, AJ and the Queen. Me too. Uh, uh, because a, I was, still haven't watched it. it. I thought it was a terrible nightmare, but I loved every second of it. Um, Everyone <laughs> says the actress is terrible, but I'm like, they probably directed her to be terrible. Yeah, right. you know what I, mean? I never give shit to the child kids. actors. Yeah, like it's it has nothing to do with them. Like they cast. Yeah. Them, it was you know a cute I mean? show for what it was, and it was yeah. enjoyable. And there were drag queens on TV, so people can stop freaking complaining about. I it. I loved every second of it, but it really was right. good. <laughs> Marsha P. Johnson did not <laughs> throw the first brick at Stonewall for us to complain about there being drag queens on TV. I mean, we deserve terrible drag shows yeah. too, you know. Like the more the merrier. We can all be Love Simon. <laughs> well, they're turning that into a show, I and it got kicked off Disney on Plus. Backlash. Well, it was supposed to be on Disney Plus, and they moved it. And they moved it. Oh, Liz, Lizzie McGuire is not going to get the same treatment. So. I know. I'm very, I don't even want to. What the I'm fuck are we so talking about? upset about that. <laughs> I can't that. believe Disney greenlit like a, like a Lizzie McGuire in her 30s and then went back and like, oh, we can't make it sexual. Like she's a th- woman in her early 30s. Like, I'm how could so that? upset. Like, I mean, they did it with That's watched. a Raven. So I didn't watch that. Well, mm-hmm. like she, that was a little different because it was still like a sitcom but right. like this would be like, but Lizzie McGuire always talked about like serious like topics that yeah. happen to like prepubescent girls. Yeah. You know? Why can't we keep that going? Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Welcome I'm back, very, kids. I'm very like passionate about this. Anyway, <laughs> now we have Gina. Gina in the city, not Lizzie in the city. I would love mm-hmm. that though, like a Gina in the city show. Let's make I, that happen. I, I'm here for speak it. that into existence. Yeah. At, besides being in the city, you actually travel around the country a lot. I do. You do. <laughs> you do. Like I feel like that's something very unusual. Usually, like queens just like stay put when they're in New York. But right. I feel like you really do travel everywhere. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, I think that I'm a queen in New York who has a really like big social media presence. Mm-hmm. And like I don't know how it happened, but I have a big social media presence of like people who live outside of New York City. So uh, it's cool to like you know go. Uh, we, I think where have you been? Oh my god, um, I know a lot of places. Let's see if I can let's see if I can name them all. Uh, I'm like going through the map. Yeah, definitely Boston, Providence. I know you've done Philly. Philly, various locations. I just like lump all the Connecticut cities into one because it's just that's like, fine. There isn't like a city in Connecticut. It's just a there's bunch of, not like, weird little towns. Um, I've done a bunch of shows in New Jersey, all over New Jersey, um, Philly, Ma- Baltimore. I haven't done DC yet. <gasps> I know DC is amazing. Dying to get down to DC. Oh. I feel like they have like a fairly new drag scene. Yeah, no, like, the, it is. Young, it, it's pretty Baltimore's young. Baltimore's the same way. It's mm-hmm. a lot of young performers. Yeah, no, it's very similar. Yeah. They they actually do both the gigs. Like the Baltimore queens go to DC, and right? Vice versa. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is weird because I feel like we don't have that same relationship with like Philly. I feel like there's very little. Also, Philly's a pain in the ass to get to, even though it's is not it? that no, far. It's, it's, it's like two hours. Two hour bus ride. It's yeah, very but easy. Queens. I mean, Philly Queens probably come here, they but do, New yeah, York City totally. Queens are never going yeah, to Philly. Barely, not going to happen. Barely. Mm-hmm. I don't know, like two hours. That seems like a long commute for me. That's a normal commute when I'm coming right, from Staten Island. <laughs> and even like from like like a story to Brooklyn is like an hour at least. Oh yeah. Train. So like, oh, yeah. You know, just double that, and you're in a whole new city. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I've done Philly, Chicago, L.A. Uh. St. Louis. Ooh. Uh, it's like on my website. I forget. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a lot of places. It's a lot of places. It's like in the bio. Like whenever people like need like a bio for like shows, it's like in my bio. I think I hit, it's like I think I've done like a dozen different states. What have you learned about like those drag scenes? Oh man. Um. Well. Uh. They're all really different. Like. Hmm. I th- people always ask me the biggest difference between LA and New York because those are the two most different. They are so different. I think really what it is is the way that we all run our shows is different and so then that informs different types of material. Mm-hmm. So for example, in New York, for the most part, a typical New York drag show is like one or two drag performers and they have like a full you know two-hour show together, just the two of them. Mm-hmm. So, LA, so New York drag shows, you don't tend to see a lot of Costume changes. It's mostly like the two queens or one queen bantering and doing lots of mix. I feel like we do lots of mixes here because we can't do like those costume changes and other like levels of production mm-hmm. value. So we try to find that in what we can do on our own and ourselves with our bodies and sound. So that kind of informs lots of like spoken word and music mix type of drag. Mm-hmm. Whereas the West Coast. Uh, most drag shows have upwards of like five, ten performers. Yeah, and literally the host will come out give like maybe less than five minutes of banter. They do an opening number and then they introduce the next performer and then they go change and then someone else comes out and like mm-hmm. oftentimes the queen, and this happens I think in a lot of cities, not just in LA, but like oh yeah, 
the host queen will sometimes be hosting from backstage because they're changing for their next number and someone else goes on. Uh, so it's very much, I think what keeps the attention there is like the constant variety. Mm-hmm. Like you, in one night you might see five, six, seven, eight different performers and if it's a good show, you'll see five, six, seven, eight different types of drag. Uh, mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, here you you know it might be like two like pussy scootin' dancing queens and so like that's what you'll see the whole night because that's, you know. Yeah. So there, I think the LA and New York scenes are kind of the sort of two polar opposites in that way and then the rest of the country kind of fits in, you know. In between. Yeah, like the Midwest and the South minus Chicago is like, because Chicago drug I think is very close to like Brooklyn, I agree. New York drug. I agree, I agree. Um, but like, you know, like St. Louis cities like that, it's very pageant-y. Um, uh, yep. Which is funny because I was in St. Louis and like, I was like, they were shocked by like, you know, these like comedy mixes and things like really? that. And yeah. Like, I, you know, compared to them have like huge makeup. Like I'm as a trick to even tell to them because my mm-hmm. make, make, you know, makeup's huge compared to them. Mm-hmm. They're all, you know, very soft and like Yeah. Well, I feel like a lot of those places, the only time you could do drag is through like pageant systems. So I feel like that has just a huge influence on a lot of scenes. Well, and it's interesting too because from what I understand in those parts of the country too, like, you know, in New York we have the ability to like, you can, you could literally go on YouTube and like decide to become a drag queen and then just like, start going out and, like, getting gigs. But, like, yep. in a lot of other places, the way to, like, get work is you enter the local pageant mm-hmm. and you become, you know, Miss, I don't know, Omaha America, you know, yeah, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Miss Nebraska America. And then, like, that is what gets you booked everywhere, yep, basically. Yep. It's definitely, like, a different system. But yeah. also, maybe, I feel like gay nightlife is just different there as well. Yeah. It's, like, not as much. Right. But how could it be as much as But you? then it's cool. Like, I always love doing small town drag shows because like if it's a small town, like the drag show is the only thing to do. And people like, uh, turn up and like mm-hmm. they are there like, you know, here a lot of the times. There's some venues in New York specifically where I feel like the gays who go there are just there to like meet their grinder hookup to make sure they're not a serial killer. <laughs> and so they're just like there to pass <laughs> I mean, they're there to pass time, right? I agree. I won't name any names of venues. Um, but they're just, you know, and then if you go to like, uh, like there used to be a show I used to do, there used to be this gay bar, like somewhere in like the middle of nowhere of New York. Mm -hmm. It was uh, like Middletown, New York. Have you heard of Middletown? Smoover small town. It was the only- New York state. New York state. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a Middletown, New Jersey, not like a Middletown, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. This is Middletown, New York. And it was like, it was like- this bar, it was a gay bar. It was the o- really like probably the only bar around for like mm-hmm. a five or ten mile radius. Mm-hmm. And so like I would do like a monthly show there, and like people would show all kinds of people would show up, and like they were just like so happy to have some kind of like entertainment mm-hmm. that they didn't have to like drive to the city for. Because mm-hmm. I think it was like a like a s- hour and a half drive, away, mm-hmm. you know, from the city. So like they were just grateful to have a show, and like the energy you get from those kind of people is like so fabulous well i'm sure they tip very well as and they well. do yeah. yeah i mean and they don't even have like you know a lot of times aren't even as wealthy as the new yorkers oh, and they no. tip tenfold because that's that's their thing for the, mm-hmm. the week they're gonna you know that's their entertainment yeah so. i heard um there's certain shows like upstate that like they just tip so well oh, yeah. that it's just like worth going because queens are like should i go up there and then like the tip the amount of money you make is like ten times what you would make in a like New York City show. If you can make it up there, yeah, go for yeah. it. Yeah. Right. I will say like a lot of people get like jealous that like I work out of the city a lot and stuff. But I will say there are times where I'll, you know, go out to like God knows where, like Boston or something, and mm-hmm. like barely break even. You know? Yeah. So it depends. It really depends, you know. Yeah. I feel like you've probably seen more of the country than the average queen. <laughs> yeah, but like I think I mean like I know like America has its problems, especially now, but we truly have such an amazing, beautiful, varied country. And, like, I fully intend on seeing as much of it as I possibly can. I think you're using drag as, like, in a good way, like, to, like, spread not yeah. only who you are, but also just, you know, bringing New York out to the world as well. For mm-hmm. sure. When I first started performing, uh, suddenly Seymour, mm-hmm. who is an amazing New York performer, yes. was like, listen, if you're going to be a full-time drag performer, you need to have a mission statement. Mm-hmm. And I think that actually is a I'm really, like... I'm shook you said that because like a huge part of like my mission statement as a performer is to like spread the joy and love of drag and like mm-hmm. I think the drag is for all people and I just like like bringing it to all kinds of different venues and like and that's why I work in like lots of quote unquote straight venues because like I want to bring drag to all the people yeah not just the gays on their phones 
on Grinder in the bar waiting for their hookup to come. Like the Church of Tonic. <laughs> yeah, coming to the you. Church of Tonic. Listen, if I can become a church and have like <laughs> no taxes to pay and can like yeah, I'm everyone. looking into that. Currently. I mean, I you and Martyr you should have to go to church together. Of Martyr. Oh my God. Well, he's yes. already a church. <laughs> I'm gonna start a cult, um, so I don't have to pay taxes. I love, I love it. it. The church. Um, I have a question. Yeah, sort of relating to notoriety. I knew you because of Reddit, because you were po- like a popular poster on the r slash drag Reddit. I was, I actually, this is really funny. <laughs> I, I didn't know this. <laughs> I am still a mod, a moderator. You're a moderator. The, I'm oh a my moderator God. of the r slash, okay, this is a funny story. <laughs> so I'm a moderator of the r slash drag Reddit subreddit. Um, and I, I've been that for like, four or five years. Oh my God. Literally, literally they were just like, they were just like, Oh, we need more, more moderators. I was like, and I was just like, Oh, I'll do it. You know? Um, but then like, I literally, so I was bored of my, whenever I'm bored at my day job, mm-hmm. I go on Reddit and, um, <laughs> I know. And, um, who doesn't, who I doesn't? know I do. It's the <laughs> best, but I, I had already gone through like the whole Astoria Reddit, the whole drag race Reddit, the whole drag race spoilers Reddit, the whole drag race drama Reddit. Um, you could have found us there. I know, probably. And so I was like, <laughs> I'm out of things to read. And I was like, what about just the plain drag Reddit? And then like, of course, I like go to the page and there's like a moderator inbox. And it was had like I had several hundred unread messages. And they're all like people who were like, like I don't really know, understand how Reddit works. But like apparently, like I think you can get just like banned or something for like like by bots maybe but people yes. who had, like, yeah, yeah like, you can. people who had been like wrongfully banned from the subreddit and like it's funny too because like lots of them sent like 5 10 15 20 messages asking to be brought back in to the reddit subreddit <laughs> but then like no one got back to them no cuz like there no, basically none of them all the all of the mods have all, were all like professional drag queens now uh. so like we're all really busy so um Nobody was responding to any of these messages. And it's funny to watch. Like, the first one's like, hey, I hope you're having a beautiful day. I am, you know, Lola Cherry Cola. And I accidentally got banned from your subreddit. I just want, I was really curious to know why. And the next message is like, um, hey, I'm just following up. I got banned. And I'm not sure why. And then the third message is like, you freaking brr, 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 brr. Like, I'm so angry. I can't believe you wouldn't even respond to my message. Like, and it just like gets increasingly more angry <laughs> as it goes. And it's just funny how people change from this beautiful hello how are you to like Arr. um so yeah i'm still literally this the um moderator of what would you post on reddit for yourself um well so looks yeah mostly on the drag reddit it's people posting their looks and uh, part of why i like stopped i'm sure this is more for you part of why i stopped was because it was just like a lot of like new baby queens who would be like hey Posting this look, wanting to get some feedback, and then people would give them feedback, and then they would get angry, and then like it'd be really <laughs> awkward. <laughs> or, or it was like, I think there were like a million threads that were like, either like how do I start drag, or like, what are the materials I need to start drag. And then we even made like a stickied like that sticky was like really helpful though, like right. it gives you like good links. But then shit. people would still ask questions, yeah. and we'd be like, "Girl, look at the sticky," which is, I think is like a general like Reddit yeah. problem across the board for yeah. all the subreddits. Mm-hmm. Like everyone has that problem. But oh yeah, no, I, that, that sticky had like um, I think you posted like some links on there, like where to get cute cheap dresses like yeah. on Amazon and oh, stuff, yeah. and like some how makeup. to do your eyebrows, yeah, like all like that basic stuff, makeup tutorials and stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. like it's useful. Just people don't use it. So yeah, people yeah. are dumb. No, that well, I, the only red, like thread I really follow is the regular like Drag Race Reddit, right. and I like all I see is just like, oh, I finally finished season five. This is <laughs> right. my thoughts, and it's like 2020. And they're like, guys, what did you think about this? And I'm like, why do it's I see this really every funny. other post? I, I I don't go on any of the subreddits. Maybe the drama occasionally, but that one. You keep me up on the drama. one. I keep you up on the drama. Well, it's the like drama this, one's been good recently, but we yeah. won't yeah, talk about we that. Won't that talk person's about gotten it. enough airtime. Um, but the spo- not the spoiler one, the cringe subreddit. Oh, is my yeah. fucking I know you live for that one. Wait, is that the one where they post the nudes or no? No, oh, that's that's, the, that's like the dick pig ones. I forget. There's what it's literally called. like six different drag race sub, but that's another thing about it. Yeah, yeah. There's the there's dick so pig many. one, the cringe. Oh, the cringe one is that was it like cringy fan comments and things? It's like fan comments, um, bad tattoos, oh. bad like fan compilation videos. 
Could Queens you, acting dumb. It's just like my favorite. Thing could you watch. imagine getting a bad drag race tattoo? There's so many. There's so, There's many. so many. I've many. seen all of them. <laughs> Don't get a person's face tattooed on you. Don't. <laughs> well, like go to an actual good drag artist who can like actually just reproduce like, but, like a good one. Do you <laughs> love Trixie Mattel that much? You're going to get her tattooed on your fucking leg? Like... I don't know. Some people do. Some people uh, feel their lives have been changed for from. Trixie I'm Mattel. not gonna get hate on it. If somebody got a tattoo of me, I would I would pay them to take it off. I'd be like, don't you don't you're not gonna want this in 50 years. I promise you. <laughs> I, I always wanted a cool Sasha Valor one, but I just don't want tattoos, well, so I would never Sasha's do it. Sasha's different because Sasha's like a visual artist. So I would get like one of like Sasha's like pieces tattooed on me. I've you know seen some, I mean? some yeah. people do yeah. that. I've seen smart. some good Sasha ones, but other than that, everyone else is just although like, okay. Very off-topic tangent. A lot of people get the crown from Sasha, and I'm like, that's very much Basquiat. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, sure. yeah, absolutely, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I don't even think they they don't know. They don't know. They, they don't, don't know. know. It's okay. But that's yeah, okay. Like, I mean, the Drag Race fans do not get any of the references that the queens make. Nope, it's, it's awkward. <laughs> Who's Fosse? Who is she? Oh my that's god, that's my favorite I thing cried. in the entire world. Oh my god. As like a, cause I like, love her work. <laughs> oh my god, like just as like a kid who studied Fosse because I was a dancer when I was younger. Like I like cried on. The it's inside. like did you not watch Fosse Burden on FX? Oh, it's so good. Oh. I know the actress so who played good. their daughter. The act. Oh, I was about to say, yeah. you mean Michelle Williams? No, not Michelle Williams. Oh, the one from Jesse's Child. Did you ever see that on um, Twitter? There's like, there's two Michelle Williams and you know your race based on which one. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> you know who it is. That's funny. I'm sure. Well, one has one L, one has two L's, right? Isn't that the difference? No, it's, no? it's spelled exactly it's the same. It's spelled the same way? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway. <laughs> Amazing. More tangents. Yeah, more tangents. So, you've traveled around the country, but you're also in New York, such a super brunch queen. Yeah. I feel like you're like the queen of... You and Ritzy Bits, I feel like, are the Are the queens, queens of brunch? I love yeah. that. Oh. I feel like you two like, own Don't that. Don't tell Brandon Voss. Okay. Oh, well, we can't call it um, drag brunch. It's so. drag um, meal between brunch or uh, d- breakfast, breakfast and, and dinner. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, and listen, most of us do our drag brunches at lunchtime anyways. Yeah. So they're mostly mm-hmm. drag lunches anyways. You know what's sad is that I can't even get up to go to them because I'm usually up at like five. <laughs> wow. The sad part is I'm always working, always so working. I can't go. I, I your, your drag brunch is one, like I... I don't like that many drag brunches uh-huh. that I've been to. Yours and when Carlos and Tiffany had them. Those oh, are the yeah. only ones I've ever liked. I hear that a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I honestly, like, whenever someone says that, I ask them, and, and people really comment on, like, what a, first, like, interactive, but also just, like, I really like to foster just a really comfortable atmosphere mm-hmm. in my shows. So, like, I think that keeps people coming back, and I'm happy for that. Well, where do you do your brunch currently? So, I do drag brunch every first and third Sunday at the Liberty in Midtown. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're super awesome. They reach out to me. So I used to do drag brunch, God, what, three, four years ago with Gilda Wabbit. Yep. At I remember. LNW Oyster Company. And like, I'm not, a, I'm not much, I'm kind of always been a grandma. I'm not much of a night owl. So brunch has always been good to me because mm-hmm. you can like, you know, wake up, you can wake up early and do a show and have your whole day after that. Um, but then that restaurant closed mm-hmm. and then Gilda moved to Kentucky anyways. Mm-hmm. And then the Liberty reached out to me soon after, and they were like, "We want to do a drag brunch," and so now it's a weekly show I do every other week. Yes. And then Amber. Oh, Grace, you're not doing once a month anymore? It's every other. No, week? No, they're every other week. That's fabulous. Every I first, wish I could yeah, go. Yeah, every first and third <laughs> Sunday. Um, and by the time this airs, it might be a fourth Sunday. Is that oh, oh. You. I know. Uh, possibly that's still in the works, but uh, there may be a fourth. Sunday at different a different venue. Oh, so, cute. Yeah. The nice thing about the Liberty is the food is freaking bomb. Yeah, the food's mm-hmm. amazing. It's so been. good. Uh, it's they so have, good. Honestly, my favorite thing there is the fig jam pizza, which I've, I've never I seen that know, even on the menu. Is it new? It, I, I have no idea. I've ordered it. It's I literally get it every single show, and I've got Sounds so it's not delicious. new, but it's maybe it's not on the brunch. Maybe it's on the it's, lunch. I don't menu. think it's on the brunch. Um, it is truly delicious. It's so good. That's, <laughs> it's because it's like, I love like that salty sweet mm-hmm. combination. So like, mm-hmm. you have like the salty cheese and the sweet fig is like, a soup. and there's like prosciutto on it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's delicious. <laughs> That's my recommendation. So at your like brunch gigs, I know you spotlight a lot of queens who aren't from New York or like queens who might have a hard time getting gigs like AFAB performers. Yeah. Why do you think it's important to like spotlight that? I mean, <laughs> honestly, I just like booking the people who I love. Mm-hmm. So like, yeah. It's funny, it's funny you bring that up because people keep like mentioning that as like a feature of my show. And 
it's not even something I do intentionally. I just mm-hmm. book the performers who I love and you know and and really want to sh- I showcase. Yeah. yeah. So like uh, I have yeah lots of A five performers like Vicky Deville. Mm-hmm. Um, someone was recently like yeah you book lots of queens of color and like I just like f- you know the queens I book are fierce and amazing performers and mm-hmm. that's why I pick them. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think more venues should be more inclusive? Absolutely. I mean, like I said, like I think drag is for everyone. So I think like regardless of your gender, sexual sexual orientation, even like yeah. people give you know shit to like s- uh, straight or bi drag queens. Yeah. And, like I think that's lame. Mm-hmm. Like race, whatever. Like we're all welcome, and it's it's an art for everyone. Yeah. Like your shows are more in Manhattan, so it's it's more interesting to see like more inclusivity in right. Manhattan. In Brooklyn, it's kind of expected. Sure, sure, sure. So I feel like it's nightlife is still a little bit behind in Manhattan when it comes to the types of performers they spotlight, which is unfortunate. I hope it, it really like gets a little bit better for it's that. It's a, you know, and I guess you have to consider from their perspective, it is like a commercial endeavor. Yeah. And like, you know, you think about like Broadway has the same problem and their, their commercial oh, yeah. theater. So it's, it's kind of a, you know, I don't know. I, I, I do see bars tending to branch out. Like, I know Pieces has uh, pieces busted. Is, pieces, I think, is actually one of the few yeah. that is actually more inclusive than right. some of the other ones. Right, but I see, I mean, it's a lot of, like, a lot of who gets booked are, like, these, like, fierce, pretty, uh, I won't use that word, but pretty dancing queens, mm-hmm. usually. Um, yeah, and I, I would like to see a lot more diversity. But also, like, I think something else, too, is, like, whenever I'm booking my show, it's, like, what type of drag show do I want to see? Mm-hmm. You know, and I love the types of shows where you get to see a little bit of everything. So yeah. that's why I like to keep things fresh. Yeah, I just like to see performers not from town. So yeah, I'm true. always like, I want to know. True. Because, you know, you just see a lot of the same people over yeah. and over. Yeah, well, we have a lot of out-of-town performers mm-hmm. coming up in the spring. I know uh, Athelia Hotass from uh, Philly will be doing... She's amazing. You look... Oh, my God. If you guys don't know I her, think I know who Look her is. up yeah. on Instagram. This queen... So she actually... Oh, I know uh, who she is. Shout out to Ophelia. She styles about a third of my wigs. Cute. Um, but she, you should, if you're listening to this and you love drag and you've never heard of Ophelia Hotass, go look her up right now. Just that name. Um, I know. It's one of the best names ever. <laughs> um, she, and she truly lives up to it because she has like the most amazing curves ever. Mm-hmm. But like her makeup is super cool and she makes everything she wears. Um, it's truly, and even like accessories and stuff. And she does like these little, um, on her Instagram story, she does these like process Instagram story series of like making things. And she made this, do you know like, like those, like those plague doctors from like the 1500s? Mm-hmm. That was her Halloween costume. And she like made the like leather mask and everything. It was so cool. Uh, they say, yeah, she'll be there in the spring. Um, Summer Orlando from Connecticut will mm-hmm. be doing the show in April. Um, there's some other performers from out of state in talks. Whenever, basically, whenever like someone from out of state is like has a trip out here planned, anyways, I'm like, do you want to do my show? Because um, yeah, I like, you know, we're in mid, we're in like a touristy part. Oh yeah, of town your, anyway, your so location is perfect. Yeah, so mm-hmm. I love you know bringing in those kinds of people. Oh yeah, I had um, Sigourney Beaver. From I Chicago. know, I interviewed her for uh, my book a long time ago. I was so upset. I didn't know she was even in town. I would have gotten her for the podcast. I, so literally, she mm-hmm. and Mick, they were literally here for like just the weekend because uh-huh. Mick took Sig to see Phantom for Valentine's Day, Aww. which is the sweetest thing. That's adorable. It's so cute. And um, and I had like just so happened to comment on something that like Mick had also on Facebook had also commented on and then he messaged me like hey by the way we'll be in town and like just so happened to work out and like I hadn't booked a spot in that weekend yet anyways like it was so perfect but like truly when Sigourney agreed to do the show I was like shook because I've been a huge fan of hers for like forever and I was like I was like starstruck that she was doing the show it was fierce I'm so like I was crushed I couldn't go Uh, or knew that it was gonna happen I was so so upset but those darn Instagram algorithms didn't no honestly though I mean I could have gone anyway but like I know in my head I wanted to be there so besides being a brunch queen you are also known I don't know if you still do this but you used to do paint and sip yeah do you still do it or no I don't I haven't done a ton of them anymore okay um I I I have lots of other so here's the whole thing I have like lots of other uh, visions for like other projects I really mm-hmm. want to pursue in 2020, which uh, because it seems like the world is ending currently, mm-hmm. I'm really <laughs> trying to make those things happen before it does end. I agree. Um, but I have lots of lots of other projects I'm trying to focus on, so I, I put that on the back burner temporarily. 
Um, but what was that? I've never seen a drag queen teach paint. Set. Yeah. So, which is a class where you drink and paint. <laughs> correct. Yes. So around the time, God, this is like two or three years ago. I had gotten so basically, I gotten fired from my day job. Mm-hmm. Um. As one does. As I one know does. I've been fired many well, times. I was in the <laughs> middle. I was in the middle of so you think you drag. Uh huh. And so this is like, this is like four years ago. I was in the middle of so you think drag, and uh, would show up up to work basically hungover every day because <laughs> we would you know do the show and the show it goes at very like late, eleven p.m. Yep. Yeah, we'd be done at like two a.m. and then mm-hmm. we'd go out drinking after. So I'd be hungover all the time. Um, so I got fired from that job, whatever, and. That's what basically at the time caused me to do drag, quote unquote, full time. Mm-hmm. Although I think that's kind of a weird phrase for it because most drag queens who do drag full time only work part time. That's true. Um, but <laughs> that just means it's the only kick. Um, but I, so then it got to a point where I was like, well, this is sort of working out, but I need more money. Um, mm-hmm. So I started teaching painting classes mm-hmm. out of drag. Ah. And as like a side job. Did you always paint? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think any drag performer says, I think all drag performers who do their own makeup are all painters in a way. True. Um, but I I grew up in one of those very kind of artsy households where like, you know, when I was a kid, I was always like drawing and doodling and coloring and painting mm-hmm. and stuff. And I took some advanced, actually when I was in high school, I took college painting classes. Interesting. Because um, I was a badass bitch. <laughs> uh, because I, uh, I had like, and I like literally won, like my high school had like, like a, f- I think I won like a fine arts scholarship for all that jazz. It's so weird because <laughs> clear, we have a lot of similar really? backgrounds. Yeah, because really that was cool. something very similar to yeah. like what I've done too. But when I, I was think younger. like most drag mm-hmm. people, drag people have that same kind of, like most people who do drag, it's because like they have some kind of, I'm sure you, you totally understand this, you have mm-hmm. some kind of proficiency in like visual and performing arts. Mm-hmm. And drag is the perfect marriage of those yeah. two, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. So it's, I forgot what the question was. <laughs> um, <laughs> you answered well, it. Well, <laughs> you answered it, yeah. Like what was it like just doing, teaching paint and sip? Oh, and yeah. you weren't drag as well. So, yeah, you weren't so just then, straight up like teaching. You were also right, in drag. So then something mm-hmm. else that I think has been sort of a cornerstone of like what I do as a drag performer is like I'm never interested in doing just what everyone else does. Yeah, absolutely not. Your your resume is so different <laughs> from the average queen, which well, is why I, I think you're so interesting. And like and and something else that I was told when I first started doing drag is it's like you need to figure out what makes you special and unique and different. Which when you're, you know, going to try to become an actor in New York, that's a big thing you're told too. That's right. Um, but I was, you know, told what can make you different. And so I'm all, and so like even when I did say thing in drag, which for those listening who are like under the age of like twenty seven. Uh, <laughs> so I talk about it. I talk oh, about it on the okay, podcast okay, all good. the time, but okay, we right. can talk so about it again. Up. No, 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 it's cool. They're caught. No, 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 we can. It was talk like about the it. biggest drag. It was truly the way to become a drag, like professional drag performer in New York. Yeah. I think for, until it ended. Yeah. Um, and the ending season was so like iconic. Is there a reason they ended? Or? Uh, it w- it ended like it ended when Shade aired because I've been watching it. Oh, it's so like two thousand seventeen. It maybe? did. Uh, from I I don't have the full story. From what I understand. The, the venue is a little too greedy to produce drag events. Ooh. So, which is that's interesting because they're a pretty big venue. I feel like they could totally do it and not Correct. like really lose anyone. Well, it got money. bought out by a different company. Oh, and interesting. They wanted to go a different direction. This is just from what I understand. Okay. I have like no. Don't quote me on this. Alleged. <laughs> alleged, <laughs> alleged. Alleged. Don't alleged, sue us. Don't, don't sue us. <laughs> um, yeah, but so when I was doing say so the drag. Mm-hmm. I was sort of the one who was, you know, when it was like Celebrity Impersonation Week and like the winners would do things like Cher and Judy Garland. Who and did I, you do? I did a lane stretch. Yes! Yes! I was always like, I want to do the thing that That's nobody amazing. else is going to do. Uh, um, I'm mad I missed this. What's funny about mm-hmm. that, fun fact, and I doubt she'll listen to this, but if she does, I mean, she said it, so it's okay. But the guest judge that week was Alexis Michelle. Uh-huh. And... Who also participated in So You Think You Could Drag back yeah, in the she day. Was, I th- yeah. think the winner, I think she beat Dusty Ray Bottoms. I, th- I think like the se- first season maybe? No, that no, 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 no. No, the first season was Jackie Cox. I don't think she won it though. No, she didn't win because that's why she did yeah, All Stars. Yeah. yeah. Um, but no, Alexis, and she had just gotten back from filming Drag, drag Race. Race. And so we were like, oh my God, it's Alexis mm-hmm. Michelle. Mm-hmm. And so I like had truly prepared so hard. I was like, I'm going to freaking win. 
as Elaine Stritch. I, so I did the ladies who lunch, of course. Of course. And I literally, and this is actually something I do for a lot of, whenever I perform a straight song, not a mix, um, I will approach the lyrics, like I'll break them down like I'm breaking down a monologue for like an audition for a yeah. theater. So like I'll go through and like figure out like, okay, who is the character and what do they want and all this. I know it sounds like so like pretentious, but I had like broken down the whole song and like had like studied the videos of her doing it and was like so spot on. Um, and like, I was like, I'm ready for this. And so I had one of my friends film the performance mm-hmm. and that friend was, uh, standing right near the judge's table. And when the curtain, you know, and so we had the luxury during so thinking drag of a curtain that opened and closed. Can you believe? Uh, like, I cannot believe. I, I cannot no believe. No drag show in New York has nope. that anymore. Um, <laughs> nope. A curtain opens and I enter and, uh, I can hear when you play back the, I've like cut it off the YouTube version. So if you watch it on YouTube, I don't think it's there, but I'm like the version that's like on my laptop somewhere. You can hear under her breath when I walk on stage, Alexis goes, oh, chicken legs. Uh, Because I didn't use to pad back then. I didn't use to pad. And so I obviously like watch the video back. (laughs) The looks on Caitlin (laughs) and Martin's faces is the best thing ever. We're so shook. Um, (laughs) I'm so shook. I love Alexis. Alexis loves me. Like There's no shade. But uh, I heard her say that. I did pad back then. And so like, Literally the next day, I started padding. Like, wow! Because so, like I, it didn't even occur to me, and like Elaine is like a skinny woman, like it made sense for the character. She's a, but she was always an old lady, even when she was young. Right, yeah. but I, I wasn't padding at all back then. So I mean, and now I have you know big old big old booty. You have good, you have good pads. Thanks. A lot of Chiffon made them. Of course she did. <laughs> <laughs> no, Chiffon made them because uh, she made some for Gilda when she like adopted Gilda. She was like, you need you need a good butt. And then I was like, those are the best pads ever. And I, I The like, weird thing is Siobhan's telling me she's paying someone to buy her, to make her pads now. Oh, really? So she's I gotten guess, lazy. Yeah, she doesn't <laughs> want to make them anymore. But I literally like Amazon Primed uh, foam to Siobhan and then she I made pads from that. I was about to say, I was like, does she still do that? Maybe I should get some. She'll, she'll do it for you. Yeah, and there's Africa some hips. Cool, I know, Africa hips. Truly. Africa. I literally just watched that episode too. Make it in the shape of Africa. That's what um, Sharon says right. on the season. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. okay. It's sort of more like a I guess it's kind of Africa-y. It's a little bit. A little bit. Right there, a little bit. If you like, looked at the globe without your glasses on, yeah. it looked like Africa. Yeah. Pinchy <laughs> somewhere. Yeah, Pinchy somewhere. <laughs> How Americans see geography. So speaking of Chiffon, Chiffon Dior, that's who we were talking yes. about. Show we, Chiffon. Yeah. Work.com. Oh, yeah. So we this are all, adopted. this is, we are all part of the Work.com oh, family. Yeah, we are. Um, I know you've done interviews yeah. as an interviewer for Work.com. Yeah. How, what, was, has, what has that been like? It was, okay, it was so much fun. So me and Gilda Wabbit, who I mentioned like a thousand times. On the yes, podcast, we could talk about her too. Um, yeah, she's fierce. Um, we do have done interviews at DragCon of mostly, so we've interviewed pretty much all kinds of people from like Rue Girls to local queens. Um, but it's really fun. It's, I will say, I'm sure people like have like watched our videos and been like, that's so much fun. And it's truly amazing. We've met some amazing queens. I've been there when you've been interviewing. Oh, you have? Yeah, you have. I have. Because I was working for Hey Queen at the time. Right. Because <laughs> that's what I was going to say. It's fun, but it was truly hard work. And like, Oh, yeah. It was Long hours. The first year was the best because the first year we did it, we were allowed to be on the floor interviewing people. Oh, you weren't. Oh, you were stuck on the. Right. Yeah. So the first year was amazing. Mm-hmm. The second year, they were like, Oh, you guys have to do the interviews in the press room. Which is, by the way, the worst place to be doing interviews for DragCon. We're talking the about DragCon. The worst place to yeah. be at DragCon. Because yeah, absolutely worst <laughs> place. Literally, you're missing everything else. Go- people would be texting us, like, like literally fans would be like, oh my God, like, we came here from like Iowa to see you and Gilda. Where are you guys? And mm-hmm. we'd be like, we're in the press room. Like, DMing mean, these like teenagers who like came here to see us. Well, with Hey Queen, they'd be like, you can only be in the press room. And we're like, Fuck that. We're right. going on the floor. Don't right. give a fuck. <laughs> well, then it would suck too because so then we're in the press room and then it's like us and like a couple other like queer run blogs. Mm-hmm. And then it was like Billboard. Yeah. And like, yeah. like big uh, news outlets. agents. Is easy, yeah. And then mm-hmm. so then the rule was all the Rue girls had to go to like Billboard first. Yeah. But or then, Parade. Right, all that. Whatever yeah. it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rolling Stone. And who, wasn't it Rolling Stone? Who did? Oh, it was Fulter. Who did the homophobic of Oh, uh, I was uh, there for that. Were you? I was there. I think we were there for that. Oh, that was in LA, wasn't it? No, that was in New York. That was in New York? Yeah, I was there for that. Um, <laughs> so, like, this girl just kept forcing all these queens to teach her how to death of drop. Is that what you're talking about? No, oh, the, uh, those uh, like, really close up photos. Oh, oh yeah. Lighting. No, yeah, yeah. I think that was LA. 
Um, that might have been all I. But maybe. it's all a blur. Dragon is all oh, a blur. It's to always me. such a blur. Mm-hmm. But the problem with the press room is that, like, let's say for instance, like, like someone like Miss Vanjie, for example. Like, that was the year. The, mm-hmm. I think the second year we did it was the right after that season, and so like she would only have like eight minutes between yep. her panel and her next thing. So then by the time she gets through Billboard and Vulture and all those big name, you know, having to post whatever was in there, uh, then then it would be like. If she had any time, it'd be like 30 seconds for work.com. Yeah. So it was hard. So we really only got to interview a lot of that year queens we already knew, like Peppermint, people like that. Because mm-hmm. like they knew us, they would be able to come up to us and talk mm-hmm. to us. Um, so it was it was, it was was a strenuous time. And then, you know, so then it, we ended up, you know, missing half of Drag Con because we're in the press room mm. alone. Well, don't worry. Drag Con's canceled this year. I know. Well, LA Drag Con's LA canceled. Is. I don't think New York will be. I don't think so either. What's going to happen with this coronavirus? Are we all going to die? What's happening? We'll find out when this is episode airs. Is the whole airs, world going to shut still down? still going to be here. I know. <laughs> maybe by maybe by April, people are like, like in their bunkers listening to this with nothing else to do. I mean, that's what I used to They're do when I lived in Staten Island. Makeup in the little bunker and be like, no, let me we'll listen to like, my favorite uh, non-drag queen. <laughs> we'll be like doing shows on like Facebook Live. Oh, like, a lot know, of queens already do that. Venmo, but like no one has any money because no one's worked in a month. Oh we'll my bring god! Bring back the fear. whole like a uh, hosting of like um, random queens drag race kind of thing, like on YouTube, and just like have those kind of competitions, the bedroom competitions. Okay, yeah, wait. A lot of people. Right okay, now. wait. Yeah, can we talk about that? Yeah, have you seen like those like Instagram like? But have you seen the I ones? I miss them so have much. You, no, 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 no. They still go on, and now they do one. So like, there's like those ones where like the actual drag queens. Oh yeah, like Tumblr's Drag Race. Yeah. What? Um, okay, but you you don't. I don't want to know. You read a honest. book on drag. You don't know about Tumblr's Drag Race. No. This needs to go in the second volume. You, I was okay. gonna say you need a sequel, and you we need could to do a whole online. episode on Tumblr's Drag Race. Well, I found out a couple things from Jake Yonsei about um, people who've done competitions. But, so. but <laughs> now the kids on Instagram will do these like quote unquote drag races where they role play. And it started out where they would role what? play as Rue girls. Uh-huh. And like, oh you would like God. pick a picture of the Rue girl and like submit that as like your look for the week. And people would like critique it or whatever. But then they started doing, me and I think it was Adrian Atrenta and I discovered this because people would like used us in like a competition. What? And like we were like role playing as us and like tagged us. And it was what? so, there are children on the internet with far too much time on their hands. I agree. <laughs> um, but the thing is, they have nothing else to do, you know? They yeah, can't go I to guess. the And we venues. did weird things like that as kids, but... I don't know. But like it's weird to think people like have like role played as me on like an Instagram drag. I, I don't need to envy- see this. <laughs> I don't envy the kids of this generation because everything's so public and online. So Yeah. They can I be, thought everyone they, does TikTok now. I'm too old for that. But yeah. I thought oh, oh my god, thing. Gina, let's do like an um let's do a TikTok competition. <gasps> yeah, you'll be the There's first. Competitions that, oh <gasps> Whoa, wait. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a, that's a we good should idea. actually do that. That's sickening. I'm not, I'm not gonna do it, but we can do it. TikTok competition. Oh, oh my God! I listen. Literally, just do the first video with me, and I'll judge everybody. Else. Yeah, oh perfect. That's so funny. We can critique everybody. Oh I mean, that's God. my favorite thing to do anyway. Let's it's workshop it. That's a good idea. I like oh it. My God. Idea. We'll workshop. That's this. funny. But everything. The thing is, the thing is, everything on TikTok like is like a meme. So you'd have to like fit everything into like the memes of TikTok. Uh, it's weird. Old. There's like a formula to it. It's yeah. It's weird because there's like a for- It's weird. It's quote unquote comedy that all has a clear formula. And like, but it works. It well, I guess people just think it's just variations on a theme. It's just memes essentially. Well, TikTok to me just seems like Vine, but longer. Am I wrong? But there's like lots of (laughs) no. There's no. It has its own full culture, and there's like all these inside jokes and like. Mm. I don't know. It's I'm too old. Str- I'm too we're we're too old. I'm too old. I keep saying I want to hire like a 21 year old to follow me around and take TikToks of me because I think I could be huge on TikTok. I just don't understand all the like. If you spent time, jokes. you could figure it out. I don't have time to research and like yeah. figure out these like. Just Google it. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's not. On, it's I know. Not on I know. It's, it's not on it's, Google. It's these. It's kids. like within TikTok. You have to live it. You have to live it. You really it's do. It's a TikTok life. You have to live it. <laughs> and the, on that note, this is not. Um, <laughs> agenda, I know. We should take. A Let's break. take a break. Yeah. I I need to take. Wig. I feel that already. Wig. Okay. Flying. Are we recording? We're recording. Wow. <laughs> I'm so glad I finally figured this out. What are we on? Episode 22? Oh, no. I finally figured I out how this format works. Joke, kids. <laughs> Caitlin's on to my tricks. I knew it. Mm. All right. So we're back. Where can the children find you, Gina? So you can find me on regular shows. I do Drag Brunch at the Liberty every first and third Sunday. And I do Drag Bingo at Madame Marie's in Astoria every second and fourth 
Tuesday. Um, and then you can find all other gigs. I post pretty consistently on my Instagram okay. story, which is uh, Gina Tonic NYC. And then I occasionally, I try to keep up on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, you can also go to my website, genotonicnyc.com for booking information. and. Thank you, Squarespace. Gigs. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you, Mom. It was my birthday present Yay, last year. Mom. Yeah, Mom. Yeah, she made my website. That's um, so nice. Yeah. <laughs> War queens need moms like that. Too. So yeah, Genotonic NYC on all social media platforms, genotonicnyc.com. There we go. That's me. That's <laughs> so what's the best advice you've been given in drag or about drag? I think the best advice, and this, it's so cheesy, but, well, I think there's, I think there's two. I mean, I could, like, I could write a, I want to write a whole book on it. You honestly. should. I really want to. I, I'll read it. I know. We should talk about that. Um, I think A is, is, it sounds so lame, but, like, just be true to yourself. Like, I see so many queens try to, like, give advice to other queens, like, do your makeup this way, do your hair this way, and, like, what that ends up being is that queen trying to make the other queen like themselves. Mm -hmm. And, like, I don't see the point in that. Like, we all should strive to be different and diverse because that's what's going to make the scene cool. And, like, if a million queens all do the same same YouTube video with the same songs just because there's a keyword in this piece of the dialogue and, oh, that's this song and it's, you know, that whole... Mm -hmm. I think everyone doing the same stuff is just going to make every show the same. And, like, who wants that? Not so me. be yourself. Be different. Find what makes you unique. Try new things. Do new things. Uh, actually, some great advice is, like, Someone once told me, every time you do your face, try something different. Mm -hmm. And that's how you find what makes what Dude. makes your face work for you. So I think try new things, be different, be you. That's my main advice. That's good advice. Yeah. I a hundred percent agree with that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I agree. And take time for yourself. That's my what's the name of my other thing. It's take oh. time for yourself. Oh, yeah. Gee. yeah. Everyone needs to do that. Yeah. <laughs> like you, Mark. You matter. <laughs> yeah. You matter. I'm on uh, a month break right now. So good. Yeah. That's what I you deserve. It. I can do that. Yeah. Is it I my turn? Wish I could take one. <laughs> Yeah. It's your turn, right? As in my turn. This is your moment. My you get question. to do this one is the thing. Moment. Are we gonna get sued for that? Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no copyright material. No, no, no. Um, okay, please tell us your craziest nightlife experience that's been, happened in drag, out of drag, something you've witnessed, something you've heard about. Give it to us, Mama. Okay. Well, I heard that there was this drag queen catfish. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Oh, Jk. Oh, oh. Um. Well, I think one of the craziest things that ever happened to me, so it was back when me and Gilda were doing our drag brunch. Mm -hmm. And I forget, there was a couple occasions where, where we would do a drag dinner show instead mm -hmm. of a drag brunch show. Actually, I think it was the, I think it was because there was drag con happening. I mean, it was the first year we did the interviews. Mm -hmm. So we didn't, we skipped drag brunch and we did a drag dinner show, which was fierce. And I actually would love to start yeah. a drag dinner show. I want to go because nightlife shows show, are too late honestly. for me. I know, they're too late. And then like, a lot of people work during brunch. So yep. I'd love to do like a Friday or Saturday night drag dinner show. Ugh. That's like one of the I will be there. Things. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, amazing. Um, so we were doing drag dinner and all of a sudden, so we're like, I, and literally, because uh, like one of my favorite numbers to do, because like people at like brunch venues love it, is Lucky by Britney. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like one of the only Britney numbers I do because it's not a dancing song. It's an acting song. That's true. Um, and I'm actress. Um, I was doing Lucky by Britney and Guess who walked in? Britney? Derek Barry. Oh, close. close. <laughs> Derek Britney. Barry walked in. So it was drag, that is Britney. It was DragCon weekend, and ah. she was like, because the restaurant was on Fifth Avenue, and so she was just like walking down the street, and she's like, yeah, I heard Britney. <laughs> and Shut I up. just to see where it was coming from, and lo and behold, we were doing a freaking drag show. So like Derek Barry came, and she watched like the whole second half of the show, and like loved us, and complimented our makeup and she was she like turned to Gilda she was like what do you use to cover your eyebrows and Gilda was like I shaved them <laughs> the only so, proper answer let's be real oh, yeah. uh, I know I used to rest in peace but now I have them back and they're fierce I took them off, cute, was, I took them off from drag oh when was that 2017 2018 mm -hmm. and I, I grew them back I like them thanks that's funny. Yeah. I like that story a lot. That's Thanks. good. That's a good that's one. That's a good one. <laughs> I want one that was short, sweet, and to the point. Yeah. No, I like that's that great. one. Good. <laughs> All right. So where do you want to take your drag in the future? Yeah. Um, so, I, so here's the thing. Everyone always asks me if I want to be on that certain TV show. That, yeah. And Camp like, Kiki. Oh my God. <laughs> Our favorite show. Be, Our favorite. Do you love Camp Kiki? No, we just mentioned it. No, we just oh, talked about it. Well, we finally, finally with Jake Yonsei watched the first episode. Yeah. Oh my God. What did you think? 
Um, I enjoyed it. Yeah, it's cute. It's all right. Wait, did you watch the first episode of season one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, because season one's a little rough. Um, yeah. But I, I think see. it's so, I mean, as a, as a camp comedy yeah. queen, I think it's so much fun. And like, I, I don't know, like, oh my God, this is such a, ta- such a tangent. I'm That's sorry, okay. That's No, okay. go for it. It's like people, people love to criticize the main drag TV show. Mm-hmm. And like my response, which has been met with a lot of criticism as a response, and I, I recognize that I have like a lot of cis white privilege and like whatever, but um, <laughs> the look on Caitlin's face. I mean, you're not but wrong. Like, <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, listen, it's like, okay, if, if that other TV show isn't going to include all kinds of performers, then like why not create venues that do? Yeah, of course. Like, of and course. so I think Camp One Kiki is amazing because it, it is so inclusive. And mm-hmm. Well, I'm happy like camp queens are celebrated when they've right. been such a pillar of drag yeah, we, from like, the start. I was going <laughs> to say we invented drag, but I guess we didn't really. But um, well, Anyways, sorry. To answer the question. So You can I, read my book about that. I, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, I would... I, well, I really want to, I guess, do two things. One... Okay is I want to move back. So I moved to New York to do theater mm-hmm. and then ended up doing drag. And now I want to kind of bring that full circle and like start doing more theater again. I don't know. I, I've One of my New Year's resolutions was to see more theater. Yes. Um, which is my New Year's resolution every year. And I'm like so good about it until the Tonys and the Tonys happen. I'm like, okay, never mind. And I mm. get busy. So, <laughs> but uh, it always inspires me to like want to do more theater. So I would love to like do like a Charles Bush play. Or yes. even if I found like, which would have drag in it, by the way. Of course. Yeah, no, that's yeah. what I mean. Like to, to sort of, you know, marry the two dreams, mm-hmm. right? Um, what's funny is when I first moved here, I had a theater company for like a hot second. Ooh. And we did and that was when um it was when Fun Home came out. Yes. So I was obsessed. Great show. Great, such show. A great show. Ugh. So I was obsessed with Alison Bechtel and the Bechtel test and that whole thing. Yes, yes, yes. Um, which if you don't tell us, just Google it. I'm we're too late. Uh, I'm not time. that's a too different late, podcast. Different podcast. Different it's podcast. a Bechtel cast. Um, <laughs> but so I did a whole so I guess I have to explain what it is to explain what I did. Okay. So basically it's it, the at the core of it, it's uh they rate media based on whether there's more than one female character Mm -hmm. that's named it's named (laughs) and do those two female characters talk about something other than a man yeah so i did a whole i produced and directed a few a whole 10 minute play festival of short plays that pass uh, and ideally exceed the Bechdel test (laughs) Mm -hmm. um and i think i think it ended up being that they were all entire female casts too but I would, I mean, something that I think would be super awesome and like attainable to do, because sometimes it's hard to produce a whole theatrical production. Yeah. I think it'd be super attainable to do uh, like a drag 10 minute play festival. Um, I'm 100% um, here yeah. on that. Yeah, board for that. Yeah, cool. I mean, maybe, maybe we'll, oh, you heard it first, exclusive. Yeah, um, we'll do a wiki up very again. Busy. I'm going to be very busy this year. Because yeah, yeah we came up with a lot of um, ideas. Please I'll don't that, steal I'll them. I'll put the um, in the, so the description. Th- yeah, I know. Oh my right? God. <laughs> well, I mean, please actually, like, if you're listening to this, even if it's like three months later, please DM me and hold me, keep me accountable because I need accountability. I would love to write for it. Oh my god! Well, let's talk. Okay, we let's, can talk. Let's talk about this because yeah, yeah. we're all, we seem to be on the same page for I a have lot to of pee, stuff. Let's talk about so, this. Yeah, later. yeah, yeah. We um, <laughs> so that's one dream, and then the other dream is so people talk about this this one certain TV show that has lots of drag queens on it. I would love to like my other dream is like having a drag sitcom. Like I would ah. love to make like I would love to make like the. Broad City of Drag, or uh, like, yes, or like The Office of Drag, mm-hmm. um, you know, that kind of a thing. So that's a dream. That shade, Queens of New York City. Uh, well, like, like a Rip. fictional. There's there's lots of drag reality TV. Yeah, yeah, I know. There there's is. you know there's shade, there's Drag Race, there's One and Kiki, there's Drag. There's lots yeah, of reality yeah. shows. But I think so part of why I loved Aging and the Queen so much was it was a fictional story about mm-hmm. drag. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would love to do some kind of, and of course, comedy. Um, so some kind of like fictional drag sitcom. A Will and Grace featuring a drag queen. Literally, I think I I'd yeah, love for that. Like that kind of yeah yeah like uh, it's a dynamic. Would it be all drag queens or just one I drag queen character? No, we're uh, we're we're gonna talk it out right now. Right, I mean, I <laughs> this I've, is what I do. I've had <laughs> lots of different iterations of the idea. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll see. We can work on it. That's yeah. what I wanted to do oh when God. I moved to LA. TV. Yeah, TV. Yeah. That makes sense. TV and yeah, film. Yeah. No, Web no. series. Mm-hmm. All the TV is here now. So that That's very true, back. which is hilarious. Back. Oh, speaking of TV, I actually, I will be on TV. Oh. Um, probably by the time this airs, um, there's a new spinoff of Riverdale called Katie Keene. Oh, yeah. I know. It's sort of like Riverdale's, yeah. it's sort of like their version of like Sex in the City kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but one of the main so instead of it being like four women there's three girls and a guy mm-hmm. and the guy is gay and of he course. he moves to New York to become an actor and then starts doing drag big surprise I, as we were like filming the show as like they, they 
are they watching us? Like, mm-hmm. are they? Do they know they that every gay guy is here? Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, but so I, I, I don't know exactly. I'm on two episodes. Oh wow. Uh, Marty Go Cummings also shot with us. Yeah. And Brenda Darling and Michelle Shocked. Separate from us, I think uh, Chris Dubois is on an episode. Oh yeah, she's so. yeah, yeah. Um, she's so sad. I know I'll for sure be in the finale, and then some episode in the middle of the season. But you'll see me on yeah, yeah. It's on the CW on I think Thursday nights because I usually watch it on Friday mornings. Okay, got gotcha, you, got gotcha. It's hilarious because like I like got cast in this show and like filmed a couple episodes, and now I'm like, of course now watching it. And then the same thing happens. I got like offered as an influencer. Um, I got sent some like free makeup remover, Ooh. and then but now I like buy it because like so like I think I because keep getting, you like became obsessed with right it. so yeah, like, yeah. I keep <laughs> like hooked on things that Yay. like I've been you know that you end up paying for right <laughs> literally it's so funny well I don't pay to watch well I shouldn't say that but well I hope they're what? paying you I hope they're paying you for this uh, CW show oh girl yeah, it, yeah. they better read. oh I got paid okay good. very well good Their mom the <laughs> TV listen. TV pays. Oh, and, abs- and you, you get you royalties until you're dead. I don't know about that. You you probably won't because right. you weren't like I mean, a character. listed, right. you know. But, but still. Um, no, like literally, I'm not sure. I guess I'm, this is public knowledge. Like there's all these crazy like surcharges you get paid for. Like there was smoke, like fog machines on set. So mm. you, get paid, you get a pay bump for that. Like they, um, they, they brought us in early to do our makeup on set so we got like paid to like beat our faces oh like, yeah to do our makeup day was taken up with us doing our, our makeup and yeah. i was like you guys were literally getting paid to like beat our faces like yeah. it was fierce um it's what she deserves. yeah i love tv work is great because like it pays well and and it's quick you, it's usually um not as long as film i mean we these were both like eight hour shoot days that's very fast that's yeah, true. That's fast. very that fast. Yeah. fast. Is, is for, it, yes. <laughs> for three minutes of TV. Yes. Yeah. That if that really was a film, <laughs> it would be like a week. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah, true. That's fast. I was, mm-hmm. yeah, it's fierce. I don't know. It's fun. I, book me for more TV gigs. Yeah, more I promise TV. I won't spill all the tea on the podcast if you book me. I'm kidding. Um, JK. Do you want to start <laughs> your own podcast? You're very good on mic. <laughs> I, you are. I really <laughs> do want to start a podcast. I just don't know what it would be. Because like, I feel like there's so many. I don't know, like... You know, like it needs like a thing, right? Like it needs like a hug. Yeah, you need to have like a theme. Yeah, so I need to figure that out. But add it to the list. Add it to the list. And on that note. And on that note. Thanks, Gina, for coming. Thank you for having me. Now, tell us again where we can find you. Oh yeah, you can find me on all social media platforms at Gina Tonic NYC. That's Gina Tonic, like who I am, and NYC, like where we are, because I'm always drunk and I always forget. Yay! (laughs) Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, I'm right here. I'm C. Tepper. And this was Wing Out. out. Bye. Bye. Tepper, you can follow me on Instagram at C-T-E-P-P-E-R and read my book, The State of Drag, where I interviewed 175 drag queens from around the world. All proceeds go to charity on Amazon.com. Ooh, I love that. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Drag the Martyr. And if you have any thoughts, comments, dick pics, send them to DragTheMartyr at gmail.com. Listen, rate, and review us on Apple Podcasts. Spotify, SoundCloud, Google Play, and Pandora. And catch up with past episodes on work.com. That's W-E-R-R-R-K.com. Artwork for Wigging Out was provided by Glitter Baby Online. That's Glitter Baby Online. Thank you.